Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show number 12. Yep, I'm still making them. You may not be watching them, but I'm still making them. Today, I'm going to review another one of my neat gadgets that I've collected over the years. <clears throat> and this is the Opti Electronics, that's the name of the company, Scout 40. This came out, gosh, about 10 years ago, I think. Kind of lose track time when you get old like me. But anyway, uh, what it did is it uh, would sp scan uh, the frequency range of well, ba basically 10 megahertz to 1.5 gigahertz in like less than a second. And if it detected any very strong signals in that scan, it would stop on that. And it would display on the screen here. Let me just turn it off here for a second. It would display on the screen here the frequencies frequency that it had found that signal on. And it would then store it in memory. So that you could then program that frequency into your scanner. And where I would use this a lot is when I went to, like, for instance, sporting events. I would uh, turn it on. It would tell me uh, what frequencies either the stadium was broadcasting on for intercommunications among the staff. Or, for instance, when I used to go to high school, high school football games, they used to use just standard walkie-talkies. And I could detect uh, what frequencies the walkie-talkies were on, and then I could tune in and listen in on what, how they were calling the plays and what they were talking about. So, very handy device. It, um, it now, it's still, they still sell it. I think it's $360, about what it sold for when I bought it. It also has an interface to control certain radios. And those radios are radios that have, and let me look it up here. Where did it go? Where's the little... No, oh, here it is. Couldn't, couldn't find out where the little uh, jack was. To uh, control CI-V interfaces. And this is an interface that ICOM came out with with their radios quite a long time ago. So that you could control their radios with a computer using an interface that they designed that would convert RS-232 to their unique interface and then control the radios. And this device would had that in mind, and you could connect this device via that interface, that special ICOM interface, to the radio, and it would, when it found the frequencies, it would tune it, the radio to that. Now, as I said before in my uh, tickler from last show, <clears throat> there was also a very, very small company that built a little tiny box um, that would do the same thing, but it would do f do it for more than just the, uh, the ICOM radios. It would do it, for instance, the Uniden radios. It would do it for um, some of the Radio Shack radios. And so I have that device, <clears throat> excuse me, also, but I can't find it. So anyway, th this is a very uh, handy little device for both amateurs who, you know, want to pick up a repeater that they, they pass by and go, you know, I wonder what frequency that repeater's on. And uh, this would catch it. Uh, again, it's very, uh, very sensitive to uh, near, what's called near field. In other words, things that are close to you that are very strong because it's got to it's gotta look for a signal that's much, much higher than all the rest of the signals in the scan it does on that wide band. It, it does not have audio. Uh, there is a version of this that they came out with later that they have available now that is basically the same thing, plus it has audio built in, but, of course, it's more expensive. But you don't need a separate radio to listen to it. Now, it doesn't scan like a scanner does in that a scanner, you can put in like 100 channels or something and have it scan those channels. It doesn't really do that. Now, the newer ones 
might have that some, some kind of capability, but this one doesn't. Even though it has um, 400 channels that it can store the frequency that it captured and store it in there and you can go back and, and review it, um, it, it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't scan, go back and scan those 400. Of course, with this one, since it doesn't have audio, it wouldn't make any sense to do that. They also made some other products. Uh, one that was the same idea. It had audio, but it had no display. So it would find a signal, and it would, you know, uh, provide the audio of that signal, but you had no idea what frequency it was. I have one of those, too. Um, I'm a real gadget freak, especially when it comes to amateur radio and scanners. Um, what else can I say about this thing? Oh, again, what I used to do is I used, you know, had a clip on the back. I used, used to just clip it in my belt, and I'd, you know, take it with me various places. I remember one time going into uh, a uh, mall and picking up various frequencies within the mall. Uh, <laughs> At one time, this was some time ago, at one time I was actually picking up cell phone frequencies back when they were more available and weren't digital, they were analog. So, uh, very happy device. It uh, does c it come with a uh, AC charger, so you can charge it. And the bad thing about it is the batteries is a battery pack that's built in and molded for this case. So once that battery pack stops taking a charge, um, you're kind of out of luck. You have to send it back to the manufacturer. I, actually, I've had this thing for about 15 years, and yesterday I charged it up, and it, it holds a charge. I don't know how long, but it's holding a charge, and seems to work fine. It had a, a couple of different ways of uh, notifying you when it found uh, a channel. Uh, one thing it would it has a little LED light would blink and you could put it in silent mode so it wouldn't make any noise so if you're like I was doing walking through a mall it also has a vibrate mode it would actually like a cell phone would vibrate again kind of silent and besides uh, that function it could function as a uh, uh, just a frequency counter so you could use it as a test instrument in your in your radio shack and use it to check out your radios and stuff like that and just use it as a regular frequency counter which would you know display the frequency real time of uh, what was being transmitted and uh, it wouldn't actually scan it would just detect that frequency as a standard frequency counter does and that's kind of where it was was uh, derived from in that the company initially built frequency counters and they turned it turned uh, one of their frequency counters into this device this handy little device it's got a uh, very nice display uh, which is uh, you can he's got a light you want a backlight you can light it and uh, uh, as I said before um, you can if you've used it for a while you know, like you know went to the mall or something you can, once you get home, you can go back and uh, step through all the channels that it has recorded in its memory and then program those into your scanner. So, anyway, that's the uh, Opti Electronics Scout 40. If you go to their website, they still carry it. It's $359. Uh, I found it very useful, and you might find it useful, too. So, that's the show for today. Um, I found a website that has for your uh, people that are learning to take your amateur radio technician license exam. I found a YouTube site channel that presents uh, basically lessons on studying for the test. And they look very, very good. I, um, I've got permission from the author of this YouTube channel to show you an example of uh, one of his lessons and uh, I suggest that if you're you're learning uh, or training for your exam for amateur radio technician class that you go through these lessons they're quite 
quite good, very well done, very professional, and should be of, of great help. So that's the uh, show for today. Until next time, bye-bye.